focus. How do you have a comic chat without your boy? He is not some lunatic that is going to rant and rave. If you have a comic roundtable that is just filled with yes men shills, then you're in an echo chamber. To have an industry talk without a voice from Comics Gate, at least somebody, is insane. It's okay to hear some dissenting opinions. To his credit, he at least highlighted these spicy comments, and that is brave for a soy boy. And on an aside, can somebody please figure out how to get more than six people on a live stream? Most important point. First, you've got to fire all the SGWs in comics. The uh, anti-white, anti-man comic stuff, they're not selling. And why would you want to write that? Well, I'll get to that in a second. A few people are going to come out and just say that obvious fact. In 99% of the comics, the bad guy is straight out of Austrian central casting. Not only is that racist and sexist, it's the opposite of reality. You know it, I know it. When you show a blonde motorcycle gang, you're telling us a lie. You aren't selling to kids who don't know any better. You're mostly selling to adults who know the idea of a white gang members is complete and utter horseshit. Either tell the truth, or if you don't have the balls for that, then have the antagonists be space aliens. When I read Immortal Hulk number 1, Annie 11, I just about lost my mind. You had blonde-haired, blue-eyed guys robbing liquor stores, killing people, then going back to their gang hideout. In issue 11, a black lady lectures a white guy on how white guys run around doing violent crimes, and it's just accepted by society. G. Al Ewing, what planet are you living on? Because it's not Earth. Those are just the two most insane examples from the Hulk. And then there's also some anti-Christian stuff snuck in there. SJWs think they're subtle. They are as subtle as a gay pride parade. The thing is, a lot of SJWs have a high verbal IQ, but they also lack a moral code, so they wind up brainwashed by the media, and they do a lot of parodying of other people's arguments without ever stopping to analyze it themselves. They end up peeing on your leg and tell you that it's raining. I went back to 2016 and read Bendis' introduction of Ironheart in Iron Man. It could have been a cool story, but it was full of identity politics. You have the story of a little black girl. Stop right there. That demographic doesn't buy comics. Make it a little Irish or Italian boy who loses his friend to gang members doing a drive-by. Little black girls don't buy comics. Look at your audience. Make the protagonists look like them. Oh, but the audience should want to read about a little black girl. But they don't. Just accept that fact and move on and give them something they want. But they can't because politics is downstream from culture. Nobody is saying what I'm saying because the soy people immediately try to shut down discourse by calling you istophobic. Okay, you've done that. Now let's move on to the real issue. You're trying to sell people something they don't want. It's not working, so stores are closing. In Bendis' drive-by scene in Iron Man, he didn't have the balls to show the shooters. In Batman and Spider-Man, they showed the killers. Why did Bendis uh, chicken out? Why do they show white killers but not black ones? If you aren't going to tell stories that are truthful, then stick with anthropomorphic characters. Oh, but I don't want to get canceled on Twitter. Congratulations, you canceled an industry. It's a death by a thousand cuts. You make the blonde guys the antagonists every single time, except the one time that it would be impossible. So you don't show the black kids doing the shootings. Then you blame the gun and not the shooters or the lack of fathers in the home. That is a tiny little cut that the reader picks up on. It's a string slightly out of tune, but over the years, more and more strings go out of tune. And let me just be honest here. If comics suddenly were accurate reflections of life, and you had a comic backstory of two rival inner-city gangs fighting and a street-level superhero gets involved, uh, starts talking about the importance of the father in the home, the feminists would go insane on Twitter. The Mary Sue would not be able to even. But you would probably sell more comics. But they don't want to sell comics. They want to foment discord. It's not tinfoil hat stuff. If they wanted to sell comics, they would sell comics. They very clearly do not. 
Politics is downstream from culture. They want to sell a narrative. Globalism, feminism, racism, misandry, diversity is our strength, open borders, blonde man bad, orange man bad, red hats bad. I read this brilliant exchange in the comment section. They won't let us have anything from our childhood. Why does every single piece of art need to reinforce a political agenda? Answer, because politics is downstream from culture. Because they're all postmodern um, critical theorists. They believe nothing is apolitical, and the more it pretends to be apolitical, the more perniciously it's actually promoting the oppressive norms of the status quo. For them, you're either a revolutionary or you're an oppressor. That's why it doesn't matter the subculture, business, or organization. They still talk about the same things. Then if you get upset over it, they pull the same old shit they always do and ask why you're getting over upset over something made for children. But they never have a response to asking why not make something new if it's going to be changed that much. Focus on that aspect. Politics is downstream from culture and the recent Kickstarter news and why they are so desperate to control social media, Patreon, PayPal, Kickstarter. The fourth age touches on this stuff. He is an interesting character, one of those big brain types. If I had to guess, I would say he's a left-wing guy who sees where the left leads. I know that he knows what is going on, that history is just repeating itself. Conservatism, nationalism... Vaguely Christianity versus communism, internationalism, atheism. But I just want to read comics, not Marxist propaganda. Then stick with Comicsgate, Jawbreakers, Lone Star, even Cyberfrog. Those should be the models for a new industry. I wish I could roll up iron sights and give Heather Antos a spanking with it. If you guys were writing stuff like this, you wouldn't be playing Animal Crossings and spurging out on Twitter about Trump. I went to go follow Cena Grace on Twitter because I read Ghost in L.A., which is about a good little um, girl, and her evil, intolerant Christian roommate. Cena Grace is very subtle, like an 18-wheeler on fire full of dildos. I scrolled through his sad, depressed Twitter timeline and realized I didn't need to follow him. Comics will get back to business, but the future of comics has no place for Cena Grace and Iceman Ghosted in L.A. Space on Shelves has to be for products that sell. Of course, Cena can always go the crowdfunded route to sell his anti-Christian comics. I'm sure he'll do just fine on Kickstarter. <laughs> Maybe he'll be as successful as Ron Mars. Speaking of which, Ron Mars probably has you blocked. He had a Kickstarter trying to raise $7,500 for his comic. He wasn't going to get funded, but Kickstarter gave him an extra week due to the woo flu. Ron Mars and most of the other mainstream comic people have an interesting relationship with the idea of selling. He blocked everyone who follows uh, Bounding Into Comics, and then he wonders why he's having a hard time getting funded. Disney Plus may do an Ironheart show starring Riri Williams. Ron hopes the show will piss off all the right people. That is an unusual position for someone who is in the public eye to take. Why antagonize people? Especially people you're trying to sell to. Because they're beyond being concerned about money. The older ones don't care as much because they have multiple streams of income and they've been in an echo chamber for so long that it has become onto a religion to them. Plus, they're scared of their own side. If they leave the plantation, then they are instantly Nazis. There is zero loyalty among SJWs. In fact, they're eager to sell each other out. They want to sell each other out because it will virtue signal to the other commies that they're not the wrong thinkers. They, um, they are desperate to stay on the inside of the herd. Oh man, this is going to upset all the right people. Well done. You think Disney is even going to have money to make this? Bro, you're living 2019. The SGW parade is over, but I hope they do make it. It should be fun to see the reaction. What's it like to be so full of hatred for a certain group of fans that this news makes you giddy? As Disney will be fine in the money department. Um, yeah, Disney is, I think they they devalued their company $1.4 billion or 30% of their company over the past month because they make apparently a ton of money from the parks. Those were cash cows. Who knew? Um, eh, you're probably wondering, what does this all have to do with comics? Everything. It has everything to do with comics. There's no way to discuss comics in a vacuum. I mean, some channels do, and some channels 
Some channels do it well. Um, the fourth age is very careful. He's he's walking through a line uh, a minefield when he talks about comics and the culture war, because the truth is, if you tell the truth, you just get kicked off YouTube. So I think I'm listening to a lot of these other channels, and I go as far as possible without getting kicked off YouTube. And you look around, if you want to see who's successful on YouTube, you see who's like you, and if you see that everyone to the further right of you has been kicked off, then you know that you're on very, very thin ice. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.